Dinosaurs are fascinating and all of us know a little bit, but did you know that this dinosaur lived closer to the time of humans than the time of this dinosaur? Today, we're gonna go through the entire period and history of dinosaurs. Now, I said period in the intro there, but really it's an era that has three different periods in it. This is Informal History. My name's Adam. Thanks for watching. We break down big, expansive topics into bite sized information so that you can understand and enjoy without needing to be a scholar. So let's get started. I think that there's a misconception amongst enthusiasts, even, but definitely regular people who don't study dinosaurs that all dinosaurs lived during the same period. They all lived together and then they died off. That's really not how it worked. And there were several mass extinctions during the time of the dinosaurs, just none as big as the one before it and the one that ended it 66 million years ago. As a brief history, there is a Mesozoic era. That is the time of the dinosaurs. That's what they call it. And the Mesozoic era started 240 million to 230 million years ago, somewhere around there. And the very beginning is called the Triassic period. After that, the Jurassic period, and then the Cretaceous, and then big asteroid boom, and then humans show up a whole bunch of millions of years later. Something interesting that a lot of people don't know is at the very beginning of the Triassic period, which is when the dinosaurs started, most dinosaurs were dog-like or horse-like in terms of their size. So the ones that you see, the lumbering beasts that are tons and tons and tons, those came way, way, way later. Starting from the top, 250-ish million years ago until about 201 million years ago, that is the Triassic period. Dinosaurs arose from a small dinosaur morph ancestor in the Triassic period. This is when the climate was harsh and they faced competition from crocline archosaurs for tens of millions of years. But then they finally prevailed when Pangaea began to split. But a lot happened that set the stage for later periods. For example, pterosaurs were flying around the skies by the end of the Triassic period, not the beginning, but later on into the end of the Triassic. So dinosaurs first start walking on land, pterosaurs take to the sky, and even small mammals start to emerge. Shrew-like mammals that resembled monotremes in that they laid eggs but still nursed from their mothers. They started over 100 million years ago. And as mentioned before, these dinosaurs were much smaller. So even the biggest herbivores and the giant carnivores weren't really that big. Some of the really primitive carnivores like Eoraptor were much smaller than you'd ever imagine. And although Eoraptor is called raptor and looks similar to what you think of when you see a velociraptor, they have no relation at all. They're not even a true raptor. By the way, that scientists and paleontologists would look at these things and classify these things. Just to put this in perspective, Eoraptor was something like three feet long and maybe 20 pounds. So a much smaller dinosaur than you'd think of when you think of a predator. What's interesting too is the bones of Eoraptor were completely hollow like modern day birds. However, it is not thought that this was a feathered dinosaur like we see later on. And if you didn't know dinosaurs were feathered, buckle up, but it had more bird-like features in its bones. So a scaly animal that had bird-like bones. And at the end of the Triassic period, there was a mass extinction event where tons and tons and tons of the wildlife that had just evolved, just evolved over the last tens of millions of years were wiped out basically completely. And this gave birth to the Jurassic period. The Jurassic period started about 201 million years ago and lasted to about 145 million years. This is, again, not a blip on the radar. This is a giant time span where the early dinosaurs and the late ones barely resemble each other. Now the Jurassic period, this is obviously the inspiration for Jurassic Park. So obviously the big boys like Triceratops and T-Rex, that's when they evolved, right? No, <laughs> they didn't evolve for tens of millions of years more. So actually over a hundred million years from the beginning of the Jurassic period. The Jurassic period was the beginning of giant dinosaurs. This is the beginning of when sauropods started to get absolutely massive. Giant sauropods like Brachiosaurus and Brontosaurus. Brachiosaurus was 80 feet long and over 28 tons, an herbivore that could devour tons of vegetation from the tops of trees and higher shrubs. And Brontosaur, even more famous likely, although it's gone through a few name changes, 
was a bit shorter in length and weighed about a third of what Brachiosaurus did. So think of Brontosaurus more like an elephant and Brachiosaurus more like a really, really heavy giraffe. This is a time when birds and rodents started to emerge. This is a time when the feathered dinosaurs started to appear about 180 million years ago. Although it might have been longer ago than that, the fossil record indicates right around 180 million years is when that started to happen. If this is your introduction to feathered dinosaurs, this is probably really interesting, and you might be wondering what were they for? If they had feathers, they must have flown, right? Well, not really. Some of them did fly, some dinosaurs definitely flew, However, most dinosaurs who had feathers we think were for more thermoregulation. Because another thing that you might not think, because obviously when you think of dinosaurs, you think of reptiles, oh, well, they're all cold-blooded. Well, first of all, it's technically not true for reptiles. There are some that are warm-blooded or in the middle anyway. But definitely we think that dinosaurs, a lot of them, especially as they evolved, might have been warm-blooded or a mix of the two. So some dinosaurs used the feathers for flight, some of them used for thermoregulation, and some for both. The Jurassic also saw the Stegosaurus walk the Earth, along with Allosaurus and other apex theropods, and the largest during this time, Torvosaurus, which had a skull that measured 1.5 meters. This was a giant animal that ate other animals, but they only get bigger from here. And the Jurassic period was different. All the vegetation looked much different. The continents were still not nearly where they are today. And there weren't even things like flowering plants, which most of the plants on earth today are insect pollinated. So there was none of that back then, which is a giant step forward, which is where the Jurassic period ends and the Cretaceous period starts. This is 145 million years ago or so, and it goes all the way until 66 million years ago. Think about how long that is. That's 80 million years approximately. So that period, the Cretaceous period, actually lasted longer than the time from the Cretaceous period ending until today. So that means we estimate that Stegosaurus lived as close to T-Rex as T-Rex lived to us. In fact, we actually lived closer to the time of T-Rex than T-Rex did to Stegosaurus. What's amazing is how fast the continent started to move. In fact, by the end of the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago, the land masses were almost exactly where they are today. Not exactly, but pretty darn close. A map of the Earth, if you could see one back then, would be pretty recognizable today. But at this time, at the beginning of the Cretaceous, there still was no ice on the poles, which means the sea level was much, much higher. And of course, this means also that the climate was very different. This means that in subtropical regions, being that there is no ice at the poles, there was about four months where there was no light at all up near the North Pole. This means the plants there had to evolve. Four months without sun is a really long time. And although now we see long swaths of time with no sunlight, there aren't plants like there were then. Speaking of plants, this is the birth, or at least the, the giant period where most pollinated plants started to emerge. Flowering plants, as we know them today, first started to emerge during this time period, which might not seem like a big deal, but it is a huge deal. Think of how many animals today eat plants that are pollinated by insects. There was none of that prior to the Cretaceous. And of course, this means about 120 million years ago, bees appeared on the scene. Not that bees are the only pollinators, but probably the most famous one, and one that you might be wondering, huh, how do those things get pollinated? And dinosaurs were massive during this period. Everything living on land that was larger than a meter was a dinosaur. And small mammals were scurrying around, but the dinosaurs thwarted much of their possible evolution. You might have noticed that it's small mammals during this period, and then the mammals got absolutely massive once dinosaurs were fully gone. Yes, there is a correlation between the two. Birds and pterosaurs lived at this time, and although the most popular dinosaurs lived during this time too, Keep in mind, the Cretaceous period was very, very long, so most of these dinosaurs didn't even emerge until the very end. Think about T-Rex. And during the Cretaceous, there was tons of turnover, tons, and tons of evolution. The Cretaceous, especially near the end, is the time of the largest land animals of all time. Prey got bigger, and predators got even bigger in response. Well, the dinosaurs we know and love, like the T-Rex, which could have been 40 feet and weighed about the same as an African elephant, could have been chowing down on fan favorites like the Triceratops and Carnotaurus were likely running around during the same period. A note about Velociraptor. 
We see these animals in fiction being six feet tall. Realistically, they were probably about six feet long and they weren't upright. They were kind of more like this. Same as a T-Rex where their weight was shifted and balanced on their hips. So they were much more horizontal than they were vertical although they didn't use their hands or forelimbs to walk on. And Velociraptor was likely the size of a turkey in terms of height. So think of a big turkey that weighed probably less than 100 pounds. Also, Velociraptor was probably feathered. So instead of them looking like this, they probably looked a lot more like this. But all good things must come to an end. And the Cretaceous period is no different. And with it, the end of the Mesozoic era, more or less a giant asteroid made a 150 kilometer wide crater into the earth right around, well, part of Mexico. The Yucatan Peninsula, that's where we think it happened, along with tons and tons of volcanoes going off. There was a volcanic winter because I'm obsessed with volcanoes. I can definitely make a whole video about Krakatoa and some other ones. What happened was the debris caused the sun to be completely blocked out, which means no light, no vegetation, a crazy cooling effect that was super rapid. And a lot of animals couldn't survive, not just the temperature change, but also the fact that their food was gone. And once the food of the herbivores is gone, the food of the carnivores is gone too. And over 70% of the world's animals gone very, very quickly. Although turtles and tortoises lasted, sharks lasted, crocodilians lasted, there were a lot of animals, including birds, that lasted, but all of the dinosaurs, as we know them today, as they're depicted, gone. Let me know in the comment section below, would you like to see more big topics like this broken down? Which ones? As always, thanks for hitting like and subscribe. I really do want to grow this channel and make it something special, and only you guys have the power to do that. Because I do videos every weekend, that means I'll see you in the next one.